What's up everyone, Kevin from Epic Gardening here. Today we're talking self-watering planters. Now this is a design I've already done on the channel, so you can go up in the right hand corner, take a look at that. But I got sent out this strange package from this guy named Fred. So from time to time, people like to send me stuff on Epic Gardening. I love checking it out. Sometimes I don't have the time to kind of look at everything, but this one really caught my eye. So I decided why not make a video about it. It's pretty interesting. It's a self-watering planter design using five gallon buckets. Now, you know me, I'm all about growing in urban spaces with whatever you have around you. So five gallon buckets, that's a pretty plentiful resource in an urban environment. So why not figure out a way to grow in it? And that's what Fred's done with some pretty unique little modifications here. So we're gonna dive into the design of this and I'll talk about some things you wanna consider when you're growing in a five gallon bucket that really will make or break the growing experience for you and determine if you have an epic harvest or just something a little sad and lonely, diseased, and dead, which is not what we want in the garden. So let's hop into this design right now. So again, this is the one that I've designed, and then this is the one that Fred sent out. Now on first blush, it just looks like a standard five gallon bucket, which in fact, it really is. It's just a five gallon bucket. This one's white, mine's black. Black is going to absorb more heat and heat up the soil a little bit more. White is going to reflect more heat and obviously keep the soil a little cooler, but it is a little bit more translucent so light can reach in and you may have an algae issue down here, whereas you really won't here, but the soil will remain hotter. So it does really matter you know, the plant you're growing and the soil that it prefers, especially the soil temperature that it prefers, because that will determine what kind of color you choose. But of course, with this model, you can just get a black bucket too. So why is this so interesting? Well, first of all, you've got these holes drilled at the bottom. That's very similar to my design right here. You can see it's hard to see against the black, but there's some holes right there for drainage. Now that lines up with what Fred calls the dirt plate, which is this right here. So my design's a little different. It's got a, a cutout lid that's just sunk down into the bottom here and supported on some wood with a little bit of wicking material like a, a t-shirt kind of coming up through the middle hole. Now you can see there isn't a middle hole. In fact, there's four holes on this one. And why is that? Well, what's elegant about this and what I kind of really like about this is that the wicking chambers also serve as the supports. So you have one, two, three, four supports. So when you sink this down into the bucket, what is what is enabling the wicking is also supporting the plate so that you have this much room for water to sit in. I, I believe it's about three inches or so. So you have a three inch chamber for water and you can see, boom, it's very, very solid, not going anywhere. And what's nice is then the dirt fills into these dirt cups and then there are holes drilled in the bottom of the dirt cups so that the wicking action starts there. Uh, so it's really nice. You don't have to have any wicking material. The dirt actually acts as your wicking material because it falls into these cups here. And then also the, the plate itself is supported by the solidity of these cups. So it's pretty neat. And let's figure out exactly how we're going to get it in there. Because what's interesting, what I learned is that actually five gallon buckets do not come in standardized sizes. There's about a three quarter inch differentiation in the diameter of different sizes of five gallon buckets. So a dirt plate that's one size fits all is not the best idea. And so what you can see here is there's actually a small lip right here that you can actually cut into with scissors if you need to. So what's happened over here, I've gone ahead and done that. So you just kind of scallop the edges or whatever term that is. And that makes it very easy for this to slide in. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in right now and then set the rest of the bucket up. Actually, before we throw it in there, I did want to show you a couple more features of this before we sink it in there forever. So like I said, there's drainage holes in the bottom of the dirt cups, which actually act as an ability for the water to come up through, hit this dirt that will eventually be here and wick upwards. But also you have drainage holes here. So let's say it rains, it'll, it'll constantly fill. So you can top water and then water will drain down into the chamber, which will be below here through these holes. And then the holes that are drilled in the bucket itself will help it from overflowing so you don't have water coming up forever this way. Uh, and then you have a three quarter inch PVC cutout, which you do not have to use, it's optional. And you can throw a PVC tube, very similar to my design here. Mine I believe is a one inch PVC, but you can use that as well if you want to top fill the water chamber. So assuming I've cut the edges appropriately, all I need to do is just pop it down in there and it fits absolutely perfectly. And then we just need to fill it in with water and soil. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is just fill the dirt cups because they can be a little hard to fill if you don't do that first because then the water will actually sit in there and you won't have an opportunity for them to wick. It'll just kind of have to absorb slowly. So we've got that filled, the base is filled. And then what I'm gonna do is fill it up with water until it starts coming out of the side, which means it'll be at the exact point of drainage, which is where we want it. So we'll do that and then we'll fill the rest up with water, or sorry, with soil, and we're good to go. So I think I probably overfilled it, which is totally fine. We'll just let the drainage take place and we'll be good to go. Now we'll just fill it up with the rest of our soil. And you do wanna make sure you use a high quality potting mix here because it needs to have some good absorption, water absorption tendencies and qualities because otherwise the wicking action simply won't be enough to actually have it come up to the top, all the water making its way up to the plant's roots, which is the entire purpose of this system in the first place. So I have a little potting mix recipe that I've done right here that's pretty standard. It's like a one-third perlite, one-third peat moss or coconut core, and one-third screen compost. So I have a nice, you know, fine medium. It's gonna be really nice for whatever I end up growing in here. It'll probably end up being like a lettuce basket or like an herb basket, just to test this method out and see how it works. So we'll top it off, get a little messy with it, it's all good. We'll water in just slightly, and we're gonna be in a really good spot to test this system out. So we are all filled up with soil. Now what's interesting about this is it also came with a mulch plate. So you, of course you could just use normal mulch if you would like, but this is pretty neat because already we're getting a lot less watering by just using the self-watering bucket itself. You know, water is gonna be coming up through here and we're not losing a lot to evaporation, but what about throwing mulch on top? There's a lot of benefits to mulch anyways, and a mulch plate can be really nice to keep even more moisture in so you don't have to lose any water at all, at least not unnecessarily. So I've got a little basil start, actually two of them right here. We're gonna transplant those right in the middle and then we're gonna put the mulch plate on top just because I do wanna test out how this will work in its entirety. Check those roots out, guys. Pretty solid, right? Okay, I'm gonna break this up just slightly. I'll do that and I'm gonna place one right there and I'll place the other right about there. We'll cover these up with some nice new potting mix that we've just added, and then we will add the mulch plate. So I slightly modified the mulch plate. The circle was right here, and I just extended it just a little bit because I'm growing two plants, and I didn't want to pinch the sensitive stem of this basil early on in its life. But from there on, what we can do is just make sure both are in there, pop this down, and we have a very well protected young basil plant that's gonna get all the water and nutrients it needs without suffering from a lot of the evaporation, etc. We're basically getting a lot of the benefits of mulch and really low resource usage. Boom, right there. Pretty cool product. Well, there we have it, guys. If you think this is a cool design, definitely let me know in the comments. Always open to some suggestions. If you think there's something that could be improved on this, let me know. I would love to know that. Um, but honestly, I think it's a pretty solid system. Very elegant, very clean. It's basically one part. You have the the dirt plate. I mean, this, this is really the only part that's essential besides the five gallon bucket. And then of course you have the mulch plate, but it's not even required. You could just use any sort of mulch that you want. Wood chips, straw, like top cover, top coat, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So if you like this, definitely let me know. Uh, I believe he offers these for sale, the dirt plates as well as the full kits. So I'll leave those in the video description. Like I said, not sponsored, but it's a cool product. So if you want to get your hands on it, I'll leave those in the notes below. And let me know what you want to see on the channel, guys. I love doing stuff like this. I love doing those farm tours that I've been doing. Love doing the tutorials. So I'm going to try to keep it coming for you guys. I'm going to try to keep growing. We've got a couple different designs here, many more to come. Some of them actually from the book that's coming out this next spring. So the plan for the book is to have a really beginner's basic guide to urban gardening and then different plans, uh, so all sorts of different plans for how to use and how to build 
different systems for growing in an urban environment. So that's hydroponics, that's microgreens, that's you know container gardening, raised beds, etc. But what I want to do is I want to extend the book. I want to put plans out for everything online as well so you can follow along with videos and even more pictures and instructions if you buy the book. So if that's interesting, hit subscribe, tell a friend, and let me know in the comments. I like to respond to everyone. So good luck in the garden, keep growing, and I'll see you on the next video. Boop.